Hi guys, my name's Lewis Taylor, presenter at Fashtag, and this is my Draw My Life. And here's me in the corner with a sort of weird t-shirt thing and a quiff. It all started off, I used to live in a very small, sleepy village in the Cotswolds. I lived closer to a herd of cows than a Tesco or a Starbucks, and I really didn't want to go to university. I even worked on a building site at one point, and sorry for these cow camel things in the background, and they're supposed to be cows. But as you might have guessed, like most people, I really, really didn't know what I wanted to do, hence my sort of angry frown here. In 2010, I decided to move to London straight after school at 18 to work in Topshop Oxford Circus as a sales assistant. I was so excited to move away from the countryside that I don't think I really would have minded where I worked. After a few months of working in the store, the novelty of working and being in central London really began to wear off. I sort of felt that while my friends were broadening their horizon at university, I was listening to the same four songs stuck on repeat inside those four walls of the most chaotic, busy shop in central London. Hence my very angry face here and a turned down eyebrow, scribbling out the music notes just to signify some anger. My style when I first came to London was sort of fairly mediocre. Now I'm obsessed with everything looking perfect and getting ready in the morning has become pretty much part of my day. But for my personal style, I absolutely love shopping in all the same places that you guys do probably. I can't walk past the Zara. But I really enjoy finding young brands like Trends and Dent to Man. And obviously I have an eye on those top designers, but I'm not quite at a point where I can browse and Dior without wasting my time completely. And I've drawn a little before and after picture. There's me looking uh, like I live in the countryside. And here's me after looking a bit like a sort of gay Beethoven, but never mind. <laughs> and I've even drawn hearts and hashtag LML, which is love my life for those who didn't know. So this is the most exciting part. Late one day in 2011, I got talking to a woman whilst I was working at Topshop, who at the time I didn't realize was an extremely famous stylist called Deborah Ferguson. So after a few brief conversations we shared, surrounded by customers requesting different shoes all the time, I wrote my number on the back of her receipt. I think I might have even given her a student discount or something like that, just in case my charm hadn't worked. And here she is with a, a very orange cleavage and there's me giving her my number, handing over a witch shoe. This day turned out to be one of the best days of my life. Meeting Deborah was completely lucky and changed everything for me. Early the next morning, completely by surprise, she phoned me and I think I was like half asleep at the time. And she was like, oh, uh, here's loads of addresses. Do you have a pen? Do you have a paper? Do you have a pen? And I was like, oh. So I got my pen out and she was like, you need to go to these fashion PRs. You need to pick this up. You need to pick this up. And I completely pretended like I knew it was happening because I had to. And so I spent the whole day running around London and my geography of London wasn't very good and what I knew about fashion was completely limited to those four walls of Topshop. So I ran around and then at the end of the day she introduced me to one of her friends who worked at this amazing fashion PR company. And she sat me down and she was like, well, did you have a good day? You did that all in pretty good time. And I was profusely sweating and trying to look casual. And she was like, do you want to come and work here for six months? And so obviously I said yes and threw in my notice at Topshop. And the office at my new job looked so amazing. So I had this vision that I was going to be sat behind a Mac, talking about my relationships and frozen yogurt, like, I don't know, Whitney and Lauren from the Hills. And I think I actually thought it was going to be like that. But as I'm sure you guys know, hard work pays off. And it turned out I had to work really hard. To everyone around me, I was probably saying I was some kind of fashion assistant, but in reality, I was a glorified, underpaid, overworked postman. And that's the reason I'm drawing myself here with these insane bloodshot eyes and downturned eyebrows. And it actually looks like it could be something from the Bible in the 18th century. But yeah, unhappy and stressed out is what I'm trying to portray here. So it's probably around autumn winter 2011, which is what I'm writing here, when I experienced my very first fashion week. And this looks more like the M4 with sort of a cow on it. <laughs> it's actually supposed to be my first fashion week, which I think was Sassin by at the Opera House, which was completely amazing. And I originally felt so out of place, but you meet the same faces and it kind of becomes second nature. And everyone you meet is important and can help you. And anyway, you guys get what I mean. But six months later, which is I'm really dramatically writing here, six months later, as I think they'd say in a SpongeBob, I eventually I actually got my first job at International Publication 1883 magazine, which was an amazing opportunity. But my life was becoming a series of disjointed scenes from, I don't know, The Devil Wears Prada or something like that. But I started saying my safe words, which were edgy, chic and on trend, even when I really didn't know what I was talking about and didn't really know what they meant. One year later. 
Here I am um, with a quiff, but basically a year had passed and I went from fashion assistant to features assistant because I was basically asked to write a column all about my struggles and everyday life being a young person, which was turned out to be quite comical and well received. And here I am with a coat hanger and then I rubbed that out and put a pen to try and signify to you guys. And also I'm kind of signifying that my fashion got a bit better and I stopped wearing gay t-shirts with hearts on or stripes instead. Look a bit like Tintin. Anyway, let's rub that out. So after my column was quite well received after it was published, I got thrown into this really bizarre world. I was asked to present 1883 TV, which was such a good opportunity, but it was completely mad. And I ended up interviewing people like the Sugar Babes, and I'm drawing them here. And for some reason, the one on the end looks a bit like Kate Middleton or Princess Jasmine. And then like literally 15 minutes later, I was interviewing Amira Khan and having an arm wrestle with him. It was like the coolest thing, and it was such a fun day. So after presenting, I kind of realised that I finally found something that I really, really wanted to do. So reluctantly, I put, handed in my notice to 1883 magazine. And this is a picture of me looking slightly doubtful because it was a bit of an unsure time. I didn't really have much to go on, but I knew I wanted to find an agent and get more involved in the media and TV side of things. But I really didn't realise how difficult it was going to be. So one of the most depressing times in my life when I thought things were going to be going really well it wasn't that easy, which I probably should have expected. So I ended up working in Selfridges, which is the reason I'm crying looking a bit like Rosie and Jim here behind a till. But it turns out, guys, it actually really wasn't all that bad. One day after standing like a mannequin in Selfridges for, I don't know, it felt like 12 hours, I got home and I had a mention on Twitter from a TV production company asking if I would come in. And that TV production company happened to be Fashtag. I feel like there should be a round of applause here. Yeah, just me on my own. Anyway, I'm drawing out hashtag here to show that it's a big part of what's happening in my life now. And here I am writing hashtag Lexi Lou to talk about Lexi, but oh, let's get on to that now because I'm drawing her here. I don't know if you guys have ever realised, but I kind of think that she always looked a little bit like Louise from Made in Chelsea on camera, which is what I'm trying to draw here, but she looks more like she's from Rosie or Jim or something. And here she is, I'm trying to make her look fashionable, but she looks like she's wearing a life jacket from Titanic. And here I am holding her hand. I've got big lips. No, they look ridiculous. Oh, okay, now it looks like I've got a moustache and massive shoes. Me and Lexi worked together on Fashtag very, very early on before it was launched. So we were both really pleased to be working together. At Fashtag, I do this thing called Rate Yourself, which you guys might have seen. My favorite one is probably the one at Fashion Week. And to show you guys that I love doing it, I've drawn me with a massive smile and I'm holding a 10, but I look like my arms made out of, I don't know, pipe cleaners or something. And the reason I love doing Rate Yourself is I kind of think that fashion is taken quite seriously. So I'm a bit more sarcastic and jokey and just love to have fun with the people I'm talking to. So that's why I've done this sort of sarcastic, really, with uh, exclamation marks. And I actually haven't written really, I've written real, which is embarrassing, slightly dyslexic. Let's we'll rub that out, okay. Now it says really. But me and Lexi have the best time when we're filming and we really hope that you guys can sense that from us because we want you guys to be having fun too. The YouTube world has been so cool and I'm learning all the time. It's really new to me, so I love to read what you guys have to say. But thank you so much for watching this uh, Draw My Life if you've stuck through it to the end. Here's my Twitter, at the Lewis Taylor, and you can also follow Fashtag, which I've written here, which is at Fashtag TV. But as always, guys, I can't finish a video without saying don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.